This is the tenth video in a series about this greenhouse build, incorporating a shipping container and geothermal systems. In this video, I want to talk to you about how I prepared for planting. You may remember from the previous videos that during the site excavation, I had removed all the topsoil before digging the climate battery. Then after I backfilled that, and before I dug the footings, I moved all the topsoil back into this growing area. After months of construction, it was quite a mess, and you can imagine the ground was super compacted. So to get things started, I wanted to make a soil amendment. I used 25% leaf mulch, 50% compost, and 25% biochar. I mixed that all up really good in a wheelbarrow, and then I moved it inside of the greenhouse to store it, and I let that cook for about a week. You can learn more about biochar on this YouTube channel, howtofarmandgarden.com. I'll put a link in the description below. For now, this is a general description of what biochar is. Biochar is charcoal used as a soil amendment. It's rich in carbon and can last in the soil for hundreds of years. It increases crop yields, sometimes substantially if the soil is in poor condition. It helps to prevent fertilizer runoff and leaching, allowing the use of less fertilizers, thus diminishing agricultural pollution. It retains some moisture, so it could help plants through periods of drought. Most importantly, it replenishes exhausted or marginal soils with organic carbon and nutrients which foster the growth of soil microbes essential for plant nutrient absorption. I've read studies that showed that the use of biochar increased plant health, which can provide protection for plants against some foliar and soil-borne diseases. It also has been successfully used to mitigate smell and ammonia gases in barns and stockyards. I still needed to address the problem of the soil being compacted. So what I decided to do is use a double dig technique to break up the soil and mix in the inoculated biochar. My goal was to give the microbial life in my soil a good environment to thrive so my plants would thrive. There are a lot of really good YouTube videos out there about double digging, but you'll find a really wide variety of opinions on how and why gardeners do double digging. But this is how and why I did it. So we had a compaction problem here. So what I did is I dug down, this is about 18 inches or so of topsoil, and I dug down to the bottom of that. Oops. And then I just piled the, the dirt to the side and I put about four inches of biochar in there and then I took the dirt and worked it back in there with the shovel and just kept turning it over and worked it down. And then I did the next one, took the dirt out, put it over here, put the, the inoculated biochar in the bottom of that and then I just worked it into the dirt. Now after I had that all done, had that all flattened out and even, I put another two to three inches of inoculated biochar on top of that and then I used a rotor tiller to work all that in really good. It's my intention to have a no-till garden. I hope to never run a rotor tiller on there again. I'll probably have to use some kind of a, a fork to aerate it once in a while. In the future, I would imagine I have to put some more amendments on there and I'll just work that into the top. I wanted to use 30 inch rows in here, so I used some four inch cinder blocks, turned them on their side, leveled them, and made two walkways. So I also put some blocks in the middle so I could step on that to get from one to the other, and that's worked out really well. So we've had about a year of growing now, and it's doing fantastic. And uh, it's growing stuff are really good. So that brings us to the end of video 10. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm going to talk about what it was like in the winter time for this greenhouse. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Hit the like button, share, leave a comment, ask a question. Until next time, Lord bless. You.